Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this new study that seems to have analyzed the nearby space to our galaxy and was able to create a very interesting map of the dark matter around our galaxy or to some extent the nearby space and nearest galaxies to us with part of the map visible in this image right here. But what exactly does this mean? And more importantly, how does this help us scientifically? Well, first of all, you have to remember that we still don't really understand a lot of things about the universe and a lot of things to us are still very mysterious. There are a lot of different ideas, a lot of different propositions, a lot of different theories trying to explain what we're observing out there in the universe. But the best and the most accurate explanation so far is what's known as the Lambda CDM model of cosmology. And that's the one that brings in the idea of dark energy and dark matter. And in that model, the dark matter explains a lot of things we're observing. We still don't really understand what exactly this dark matter is, and it still hasn't really been officially proven or even found somewhere out there, but at the moment it still offers the best explanation. And in that particular model, the entire universe sort of looks like this. What you're looking at right here are the cosmic webs of the universe. And all of this is essentially a combination of gases, various stars, and of course the mysterious dark matter that forms a kind of a skeleton or a kind of a foundation for the entire cosmic web and for the entire structure of the universe. And because hypothetically it also represents about 80% of the entire matter in the universe, it of course represents an extremely interesting scientific phenomenon that a lot of scientists are trying to understand. And because it's such a big part of the universe, it also to some extent guides pretty much everything in the universe, forcing things to move in a certain direction. Or in case of galaxies, also forcing them to spin in a certain way as well. Which of course means that by studying the nature of dark matter and by trying to learn where exactly it's located in the universe, we can learn a lot more about the universe itself. And although I've already talked about several previous studies where the mysterious cosmic web and by association the dark matter was already observed using some of the distant images from the early universe, and you can actually find some of these videos somewhere right there, because of its nature, because it's basically invisible and doesn't really interact with any kind of matter, trying to see or to study dark matter in the vicinity of Milky Way is a bit problematic. As a matter of fact, it's an almost impossible feat to achieve, simply because of the way that it's very difficult to see things from within the Milky Way and because dark matter itself doesn't really show itself unless you look at really far away objects. For example, the gravitational lensing effects you see right here from the galactic cluster known as Abel 1689 is one of the visual ways we can usually see the existence of dark matter. The strength of this lensing effect cannot be explained by just visual matter alone. Something else really massive and invisible has to be present in this relatively distant galactic cluster. And at the same time, because the universe was much simpler billions of years ago, the complexity of the universe and the complexity of the so-called cosmic web was also much, much simpler. And at the same time, because in the last few billions of years the universe evolved quite dramatically, the images we're seeing from billions of years ago represent a universe that was much simpler with much simpler cosmic web and much much simpler dark matter distribution as well. Over the past few billions of years, the universe became much more complex, thus also increasing the complexity of the cosmic web and of course the dark matter distribution. And so trying to identify some of the nearby cosmic webs and also trying to study the nearby dark matter is sort of what a lot of scientists are currently trying to achieve. And so at the moment, the only way we can actually study all of this is by running some really complex computer simulations, such as the one right here known as the Illustris project. This is actually the one that recently was used in this particular study as well, and this is the one that shows us the distribution and the evolution of dark matter, but only in terms of the computer simulations, not in the actual reality. However, by using these simulations and looking at the universe billions of years ago, it has already been sort of shown that the Illustris project is able to simulate very similar features to what we actually observe in the universe out there. This is actually one of the recent pictures I've discussed in one of the previous videos. And so there are definitely quite a lot of matches between the predictions and observations, at least in the distant, much younger universe compared to where we live today. But the scientists behind this recent study decided to take a slightly different approach. They decided to combine the simulations from the Illustris project with a specially trained deep neural network whose main purpose was to predict the distribution of dark matter by using the well-known information about the distribution and motion of galaxies around the Milky Way and by then creating a map out of this. 
And for this they used a lot of various galaxies simulated in the Illustris project and tried to select the ones that most likely resembled the Milky Way, while then also identifying very specific properties they needed to try to predict the distribution of dark matter around that particular galaxy. And although the scientists admit that it's not a perfect recreation of the nearby space, it is accurate enough to represent what's most likely happening around the Milky Way. With the images in the paper showing us what all of this looks like from three different sides. Although personally I would really love to see this as an actual 3D recreation as well at some point. And so we're obviously right there in the middle where the cross is and this is the nearby space close to us. With some of the nearby clusters like Coma and Fornax cluster and the local void visible as well. Here's what all of this looks like from a different perspective or basically if you turn the picture 90 degrees. And here is probably the most impressive view, which technically makes this the top view. This is the view that shows us all of the nearby very well known clusters and a lot of nearby galaxies. And once again we are right there in the middle. And what's interesting about these three images is that it also indicates the overall motion of all of the matter including dark matter in the vicinity of the Milky Way. You can see all of this as these arrows pointing in various directions. Now once again, as a scientist said, this is not the perfect recreation, but this is a very accurate recreation nevertheless. And much more accurate maps might be created in the future, but for now this is a very very good first step. And in order to train their algorithm and to create these beautiful images, they used the catalog of galaxies known as the Cosmic Flows 3. This contains roughly around 17,000 different galaxies around us, which represents roughly around 600 million light years away from the Milky Way galaxy. And what makes this model really interesting is that despite this being just a model, it nevertheless managed to recreate some actual structures we know of, reproducing them extremely accurately. For example, the local void right here was recreated entirely by the simulation, and we know as a fact that the local void does exist near us. It also successfully recreated various local groups of galaxies with almost perfect positioning as well. Which of course implies that this is indeed an extremely accurate map of what seems to be the local web, the local cosmic web and of course the distribution of dark matter near us as well. Surprisingly it even recreated the region right here known as the local sheet. This is the region roughly around 7 megaparsec away from us that encompasses quite a lot of different galaxies all moving in a single direction with a relatively similar speed as well. And all of these galaxies are also more or less on the same plane as well, with the biggest ones visible in this image right here. And so surprisingly this was also recreated in this particular simulation. But also while creating this map the scientists identified several unusual structures or unusual formations that nobody really knows about or understands just yet. For example, previously undiscovered and quite unknown filaments all over the place that seem to be present in pretty much most regions that are currently unknown to us. With this image specifically showing us that there are a lot of different filaments out there that seem to be connecting all of these galaxies together, but that's not something that's currently known to us or currently visible in any way. And so by trying to confirm these regions or confirm the existence of the filament in those regions, this map can be thus refined or possibly made even more accurate thus allowing us to understand what the local structure actually looks like. And by also studying these structures and these filaments in some of the closer regions to us, like for example between the Milky Way and the Andromeda galaxy, we might also learn about what's going to happen to these galaxies in the nearby future. Some scientists today don't actually believe that these galaxies are going to collide. And so by studying the dark matter and the filament distribution here, we might be able to simulate the future of Milky Way and the Andromeda in the next 5 billion years. And so by refining this model and making it more accurate, it might even be possible in the future to somehow predict the evolution of the universe and to also see into the future of many different galaxies near us. And this is of course what makes these models and these particular studies so exciting. It allows us to see the past, the present and of course the future of where all of this is headed and where all of us are going, at least in terms of the galactic structures. And so I'm actually looking forward to the part 2 of these studies and hopefully some new simulations that show us exactly what's happening near us. But I guess until future studies, that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this show on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.